The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host, where there is no bull side, there is no bear side. There's just the right side, and that is the side of you making money. As always, uh, we like to uh, come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And uh, it does. But uh, why does it? Uh, hmm. Various reasons. But uh, what we need to do now is uh, kind of get started. Now, when we look at the market, uh, even lighter volume than yesterday, we're up another eight points in the S&P cash. Um, this is not an uncommon uh, phenomena, and that is very light volume, but in very light volume, uh, shorts continue to short in the morning and cover in the afternoon, and a market can kind of go a lot harder and higher than you thought it could, but uh, it is a market that normally is built on sand, and everybody loves the house. It's cheap. Oh, it's wonderful. Everybody lives on the beach, but until a storm comes... And then when the storm comes, everybody acts surprised uh, that that house was built on sand. But uh, uh, as I shared with my subscribers in the daily newsletter today, we have more stocks uh, testing previous highs on lighter volume than on January 29th. We all know what happened when we came into this one. I'm not predicting that. I think that uh, one of the jobs of the Fed and the Fed president right now is to make sure that uh, the economy is good as good as they can until the election. If it all burns down the day after, no big deal. Uh, but um, certainly look and see the writing on the wall uh, with the previous FOMC uh, chairman uh, unceremoniously getting fired on 60 Minutes. Uh, and a uh, Fed president that uh, is constantly uh, in contact with the current president. Um, and uh, even comments today by, God, I'm going to forget his name now, um, Jim Grant. Uh, I should have recorded him because they were pretty good. He had a fairly good look at what was going on, and that was that he said, you know what, it's like the Fed president uh, is the uh, NBA um, referee. And instead of being the person that's in the background uh, and, you know, the athletes being the star, they've basically stolen the show and are enamored by their own press uh, when if they were doing a great job, it's uh, said if uh, God's doing his job, it's like he's not doing anything at all. Unfortunately, all we see them is uh, doing their job, which means that uh, at this point, uh, seven, eight years in, probably not a great thing. But uh, I do suspect that uh, there is a motive afoot. Uh, of course, we have a Fed that uh, continues to think that wood that is uh, thoroughly soaked will burn. If you were a boy sprout, as I was, uh, you know, no matter how much you want to get that wood to burn, if it's wet, you can get it to burn for a little while, and then it'll just flame out. Uh, you need a nice, good, dry wood, and you can find some even in a rainstorm. Uh, but uh, wet wood, eh, no matter what you do, eventually it just kind of burns out, uh, and uh, that's all there is. In the meantime, of course, we're up seven points or eight points on the S&P cash. Volume is pathetic at 2.15 billion shares for making new highs. Um, but like I said, to me, uh, the signal most likely is going to be shorts that quit shorting and go long. 
Uh, normally, that is when the market turns. As of last night, I still see too many people shorting. Maybe that will change tonight. But uh, to me, uh, the light volume into summer pushing highs up. Uh, far too many people shorting the market um, tells me that, uh, again, just everybody's just a little bit early out here for uh, predicting a failure in the market. But uh, I wouldn't be in uh, positions that I was uh, trying to make a dime and risking a dollar. Uh, a, uh, there's a, of course, as uh, Will Rogers said, the return of your money is more important than the return on your money as we get this party started. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating. On this day in 2000, U.S. District uh, Court Judge Thomas Penfield Jackson finalizes his ruling that Microsoft is a monopoly under the Sherman Antitrust Act, ordering that the untrustworthy company be split in two and placed under various restrictions. Microsoft announces its plan to appeal the ruling, uh, which never went through, by the way. Meanwhile, the stock market, which had fallen by nearly a third in previous months amid fears that Microsoft would be broken up, suddenly decides today that it likes the idea. After all, as the Dow Jones Industrial Average rises almost three-quarters of a percent, and the NASDAQ jumps 2.21 percent. But uh, again, that is uh, just a bounce in what would be the NASDAQ being cut more than in half since the beginning of that year. Um I would suspect that um, in the next couple of years, we do have a lot of monopoly rulings out there uh, in uh, tech land because uh, basically they have been and have become monopolies. There is nobody that can really come and compete with Amazon or compete with Google. I don't know if the best thing is splitting them up, but uh, if there was any definition of a monopoly, I think that you can talk about several of those companies being it already. And uh, uh, like this one guy told me, he says, I just don't think it's right. Monopoly is only is a board game only sold by one company. Think about it. Hmm. Anyway, other things going on. Skynet has become self-aware. If you're familiar with the Terminator movies, uh, you'll wonder where you were this day. An Israeli robotics company. Uh, develop tiny combat robots that climb stairs, traverse difficult crane, and nail anything that moves with a 9 millimeter Glock. Uh, now, we have drones, of course, which are just basically remote controls. There's a human on the other side. The difference on this, these have a little switch where you can flip it, and it will go into the house and shoot anything that moves. Uh, literally a seek and destroy robot and uh, beginnings of uh, the Terminator movies, if you remember any part of it. But uh, scary? Absolutely, yes. Uh, no real uh, regulations or software in it that keeps it from doing that. Uh, right now, of course, robots are actually pretty easy to defeat if you know uh, what moves electrons. But uh, my guess is these things will become armored. Uh, resistance to EMPs and electrical shocks. Um, but uh, what can you say? Anyway, there are robots you can buy today that will go out and kill humans without any human intervention. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey! Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. You can always email me at path at tfnn.com. Call me at 877 927 6648. And uh, post a message in the den. I had a question in the mail, uh, in the uh, email here already. Uh, I don't know why everybody thinks that everybody knows everybody in Hollywood. And, of course, my years there were mostly about 1990 to 19, 2001 or two. But the uh, question was, that I guess probably because he's all over the TV today, and that is Brian Grazer. He's a, a big-time producer um, in Hollywood. But, uh, yeah, I did meet him once. And uh, my job wasn't mostly to deal with anybody that were uh, big-time movie stars, although I met a, a few for a second. They wouldn't have recognized me the day after, but I met them, talked to them. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Brian Grazer, met him. I'm trying to remember which movie it was, but mostly what would happen is before a movie was made, everybody that was going to work on the movie would get together and have one big meeting with the producers and the directors, and everybody would be in a big room, and they'd all say, they'd walk through the entire movie and make sure that everybody uh, could do everything and ask them and sign off on everything, and they would go through step by step. But uh, if there was any reason why person or company X had to talk to the other person in company X, they would. So there was kind of a big deal. Occasionally I would be invited to go with those things if someone brought up something just so they could say, yes, we can do it or no, we can't do it. Or, you know, we'll have to charge you more money or whether it's even physically possible at all. I think it was one or two uh, where he was running the show, but there may be 50 or 60 Sometimes I think the one I had, there were 100 people in this meeting room, and it wasn't, uh, it was uh, at Digital Domain. And uh, if you ever watch it, I don't know if they're still in business. I think they went out of business here in the last year. But uh, they were on Venice Beach. Uh, but they had their giant meeting room that had been made like the inside of a whale. So when you walked into it, you kind of walked into the mouth, and the whole tail and everything that was in the end. I never understood the whole idea of making a meeting room like a whale, but uh, I was in there with 80 or 90 other people one time. Um, 
but uh, it's very at the peripheral side of things. Uh, and probably is as much uh, to do with uh, how great a book is as a laser printer is um, and had to do with it. Because that's what we did. There was a little bit more technical to it, but uh, most of it had to do just how well we could do those things. But anyway, um, my life in Hollyweird uh, was uh, pointed and short, and uh, I'm not real big on going back. Although I've got a lot of friends that I made there that I'm still uh, still worth and happy with, talk to a lot, and visit me occasionally when they come down here to Florida. VRX, uh, of course, uh, Valiant uh, slash 26 Profits this morning. Uh, not a big deal out here, but man, it's gotten hammered. I don't think anything else happens. But the real question on this is what most people do when new CEOs come in, and that is do they throw everything in the kitchen sink in on one earnings report and therefore it's time to get off from here? And the answer is probably going to be a yes, I suspect, on uh, Valiant. Um, now, it doesn't mean that you buy it today, but you watch this thing over the next week or so, and if this stock does do what I call my Lazarus pattern, it just goes sideways for 7, 10, 15 days or something, and you don't see a lot of movement in this thing, then figure that everything's been tossed into this earnings report. Uh, the end of the world, dogs living with cats, um, blivers, uh, rivers running with blood, the, you know, everything that could go wrong, terrorists attacking them, everything that could be uh, and could go wrong has been put into the, this report. Uh, you can take a look at it, but uh, not uncommon uh, in the parlance of Wall Street. They call it the kitchen sink report. It certainly has the smell and feel of that, so keep an eye on it. If I was short this stock now, I would seriously have to say, that uh, I would have my stops not very much higher uh, than the uh, price today on the close. Uh, could it go to zero? Yeah, a lot of things can go to zero. Will it? They got a lot of cash. Uh, if you look at the report this morning, and it would be tough for me to say it, but uh, you watch for a lot of these companies that absolutely get eviscerated that still have some decent uh, earnings potential down the road, and the question is whether or not you know, the 20 whatever, $20 price tag on this today is that. But uh, it is interesting, so we will move on. I think we've got a caller, except we've got a very slow typist. We're going to go to Max in Houston. Um, yes, um, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. I, I have a question. I'm, I'm trying to uh, get into trading, so I'm curious, how much risk capital should I be putting into the market, you know, for, well, for trading? For trading well, purposes, it's like if I subscribe to your service, how much should I have to be able to do, you know, you know well, to do I, the trading I, that I, have, I need to do? I have two services. The question would okay. be, are you planning to invest? And well, let's say invest means that your trades would be at least one week and maybe as long as two years. Or are you talking about buying today and selling in the next two days? It probably would be trading, short-term okay. trading. I would Therefore, keep yeah, though. because be, there's kind of a regulation, and why it isn't hard and fast, it would make your life a ton easier. Uh, but for the most part, I would say the answer is $25,000. You need to stay above that $25,000 level. Last I looked, I don't know, it's been forever since uh, I've ever even thought of it, but uh, there is that whole uh, pattern day trader thing where you have less than $25,000 in your account and you can only buy and sell stuff. Uh, since it doesn't affect me, I don't spend a lot of time around it. Yeah. But that is the one critical issue. You can always trade small. What you can't really handle is not being able to buy and sell when you need to. And that $25,000 yeah. limit and the pattern day trader thing is the bigger issue uh, if anything, I, you know, you could start with five grand, but the problem I see, of course, is needing to get in and out of a particular position. And yeah. uh, if it moves against you and, you know, I have a longer term newsletter 
uh, for those that can't get it in and out except at the end of the day that, uh, you know, put money in 401k and you can still make big money, but it's tailored to somebody that might hold two, four weeks, uh, hopefully two or four years. Uh, this has just yeah. not been the kind of uh, market that really allows people to do that. Even stocks like Apple uh, have been problematic. But uh, now that's it. It's that whole pattern day trader thing and uh, that $25,000 limit, I think, is still in effect. I don't know. Maybe someone can say. Um, Reg T rules still apply on 25000 Someone in the den said. Um, but uh, I'd have to go back and find it. But that's the one thing you need to stay out of. All right. Well, thank okay? you. I appreciate it. Thank you, you bet. Bye -bye. We shall be back after this a brief commercial timeout. Got more things to discuss out here. The cart. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. A pattern day trader is a term defined by FINRA to describe a stock market trader who executes four or more day trades in a five business days in a margin account, provided the number of day trades are more than 6% of the customer's total trading activity for that same five-day period, which it would be mostly if you're even close to this. Three more day trades in the next four business days will subject your account to restrictions. You can only close existing positions 
or purchase with available cash up front for 90 days or until you deposit $25,000 into your account, whichever comes first. Day trading also applies to trading in options contracts for sales of security through margin call accounts and uh, towards a, the day trading calculations. Now, this is a FINRA uh, deal, uh, but uh, almost all brokers uh, at least, well, in fact, they all do the minimum. Some are mar more draconian than others, so uh, just uh, be aware of that. And uh, until you build up a position, uh, you can always start with longer trades. And, of course, longer trades mean that you need to wait for better setups. Uh, the cream of the crop, you just can't go out and say, hey, I'm going to try to make a few bucks today in the market. You have to wait for very good setups so that you're not always going in and out of positions, but uh, part of being a pattern a day trader. Zillow shares were up today, 10% pre-market. Investors cheered because of a lawsuit settlement with a rival firm. Uh, it's owned by News Corp and the National Association of Realtors. Uh, but a lot of people short thinking that the lawsuit would go the other way. Uh, it didn't, and surprise, uh, up 10% today. Michael's whiffed on comps and lower revenues, also guiding lower. All these stores, uh, Michael's has about three-fourths of its stores uh, that are in strip malls. The other fourth are actually in regular malls. Uh, if you've never been in one of these stores, they tend to be, uh, or they are, uh, an arts and craft kind of store. Let me put it that way. Um, I'm a Joann's Fabric kind of place. They're a little better than Michael's, but uh, occasionally I've got to go in there and find all kinds of stuff. Uh, I like making things, uh, and uh, there's uh, many things in there that are cheap that can be re repurposed uh, for all kinds of Rube Goldberg devices that I like to build, uh, and some of the uh, woodworking that I do. But uh, lower, another one of these retail stores uh, that any kind of uh, mall store uh, Exposure is just killing many of these companies. Uh, Biogen IDEC uh, down fairly hard uh, today. Uh, it said that its investigational therapy for multiple sclerosis missed its primary and secondary goals in mid-stage studies. That pretty much means it's dead, but that data suggested evidence of a clinical effect. Um, somewhat, but uh, normally that means that the there's probably a 90% chance this drug will never see the light of day to make a dime. And of course, uh, Titanic, uh, the uh, shares of dry ships plummeted more than 40% early today on concerns the cargo firm would go out of business. A lot of people have really been beating the drum on uh, what's going on in uh, commodities and the commodity space. They are not in silver or gold, but of course are in iron and copper and moving it in these gigantic ships they have. Uh, even though uh, the prices have dramatically rebounded, uh, none of these companies seem like they can get out of their own way. Uh, this looks like the first step to dry ship going bankrupt. And probably the best thing for all the surviving companies out there as maybe it may firm up prices a little bit more, but uh, dry ships by themselves going bye-bye, probably not enough to really move the needle on a lot of these other companies uh, but uh, I haven't looked at them. Maybe we'll look at them uh, when we get started. The company noted that it defaulted on three loan payments, which amount to uh, $213 million through March 2017. Uh, there were times, probably two or three years, where I don't think you could have gone into the Tiger's Den at TFNN and not seen some kind of reference, either long or short, uh, for a bulk shipper. Uh, but the dry ships uh, goes the way of the dodo, I suspect, in a few days. Heads will roll. Uh, we talked many, and what, a month ago, somebody asked me about 3D systems. Uh, I said I had written a report last year that basically stated uh, there was one big problem for uh, companies uh, in the 3D space, and they needed to address that one thing. Uh, I put it into the tech side. Nothing's really changed that, and uh, why there's some in-depth to that, uh, whatever it is, five, seven page thing I did on 3D printers. 
the answer is that until they get a few things fixed, most notably uh, the materials that they actually print with, uh, and get that into a wider field, these companies are going to have problems. Uh, of course, the 3D CEO left a couple of months ago. Uh, we now have the Stratasys uh, Systems CEO leaving, um, and uh, that even gets a little bit more problematic because you don't have a real CEO replacing them. Uh, this looks like uh, this is one of the things where uh, in a board meeting, Everybody kept giving this guy a lot of crap, and he just uh, gave them a uh, F-bomb and said, I'm leaving. And uh, anyway, uh, the reason why is they didn't have a regular CEO, and they just have a board member that's going to go in there and assume the top spot on July 1st. Uh, but sinking ships uh, don't have a lot of people signing on to be the next captains. Uh, but that is it. Uh, 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 Ralph Lauren, another one uh, getting hammered today. Uh, it has all the problems of every other retail stock, almost doubled. Uh, many of their stores tend to be in malls. Uh, many people are not going to malls. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, work with the new CEO who's taken over another sinking ship has all kinds of problems. Uh, but uh, many of the things he's already done have not taken hold yet. He's probably going to get one more quarter. Uh, if that quarter does not move along, well, he may probably get barbecued just the same. But uh, they did say that they were having sluggish demand at Macy's, Hudson's, Nordstrom's. A stronger dollar also eroded the value of its uh, sales overseas and curtailed spending for European and Asian tourists in North America. But uh, that is it. Uh, we got about a minute here. Do you think I can get a chart up in that time? I don't know. We will see. But I uh, wanted to see, uh, what is that, RFRL? I think it's RL, isn't it, Ralph Lauren? Um, you can take a look at this chart. It kind of tells you everything that you uh, even thought of out here today. Um, you know, it did recover a great deal, but it's still... You know, some massive volume out here, 6.7 million shares. Uh, you know, even though they kind of bought this thing back up, opened it low, uh, trying to buy it back. I don't think there's, I think this has got at least two quarters to go before you see uh, this big inter, uh, aircraft carrier of a company turn around, if it can be turned around at all. Um, kind of a Yahoo. Ah, speaking of Yahoo. Yahoo! We'll talk about that one next. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. 
Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Yahoo got uh, at least a little news in the form of a buyout. And if you look at the action today, it kind of tells you everything you need to know about the price of that offered buyout. Uh, it is uh, basically valuing um, the company at about six bucks, which is what it's probably been worth for a few years. The rest of it, of course, Alibaba stock. And the question is whether or not that Alibaba stock is worth anything because, of course, the IRS will only tell them after uh, someone buys it or sells it. Uh, most people are looking at that uh, kind of uh, semi-retarded action at, in the IRS as uh, the defaulto. As soon as you do, uh, we are going to tax you on it. So uh, keeping many people at bay. Uh, nothing like a tax uh, scheme in which uh, you are not allowed to know the rules of the game before you get involved. But uh, I don't know what else you could say about it other than that. Uh, doo -doo -doo, what do we have here? I was looking at Apple. Um, you know, we talked about this one getting in and filling uh, its uh, halfway move higher, uh, where you would probably want to actually short this stock. Um, you know, I'm not a big fan of shorting this thing right now, but uh, it does kind of look like it's got a range in here from about this mid part of the unfilled gap down, which it went into yesterday, and uh, up a little higher than yesterday, but again, not a lot of volume. Right now, I'd have to say that uh, you're in a trading range from probably around 91 bucks. Uh, from this uh, 101 area unless you get some juice. But uh, volume has been declining over the last three days as the stock has moved up, even spiked yesterday and still not a lot of action. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have? Um, ACI Worldwide, kind of watching this stock as it goes higher today. Uh, to, to, not a lot of action, uh, but this is pretty typical. We've got a ton of stocks that are going through either previous highs or congestion zones, and there isn't a lot of volume. Um, April 22nd, uh, let's call it 500,000 shares. Right now, we've got about half that as we go in with uh, an hour and 15 minutes left in the trading day. Uh, let's take a few looks out here. I don't know if that one's all that exciting. I wanted to see that one come in today. Uh, Airy Pharmaceuticals. In fact, let's take a quick look at the IBB. Looks to me like uh, we've got what is kind of this trading range setting up. And, of course, it was BB I, or BIIB uh, that dropped the Chalupa today. But uh, it certainly looks to me like we got into that candle of April 22nd that had 4.4 million shares in the IBB, you got into it the last few days with uh, the highest being about 2 million shares or half that. In an ETF, to me, that's a Roman candle of a signal. And uh, 
I don't know what else you can say it other than that. Energy on the way up has been tepid, to say the best, uh, off this May 12th low back up uh, to test this April 22nd high. Could you still get up there? I think maybe you could, but man, I'd have to say of uh, ETFs or sectors that look like maybe they're type, uh, topping out, certainly looks like uh, these companies in the uh, IBB are. And of course, it's the BIIB today, Biogen, that dropped the Chalupa and gets the losing horn. Uh, down pretty much into the previous lows. Uh, one of my favorite stocks of last year, of course, mostly because we were short it when it imploded. Uh, down uh, today on 7 million shares. I was looking at this. I disliked the fact that it had, I was hoping for either a lighter volume than the April 25th over the last few days. I just didn't see a market that really looked weak either. Uh, but this one led the market down uh, when it fell apart last year. I suspect that it is uh, also doing the same thing in the IBB, and that is IE leading it down. You had the January 27th high at 5.1 million shares, tested it with half the volume on April 25th, and of course, you even had lighter volume as it came back into this gap that has existed for a while. Uh, down on 7 million shares already today. You've got uh, 2.3 million shares at 242.07. Uh, that's just another eight bucks down, but uh, we may play around here for a while. It's hard for me to not think that uh, these biotechs uh, as a whole look like they at least want to come back down to that uh, low one more time that we've seen in here. That would be around the 240 level on the IBB. A nice trading range out here, but man, uh, if you look at my power law vector indicator number, that's what I'm looking at out here. Energy was off by about, uh, eh, maybe not a third, close to a third on this last leg up. There just isn't any energy. There isn't any energy on the way back up. There wasn't a lot of energy. And of course, uh, my guess is this is gonna continue to be a political football uh, into the election. Uh, probably, I don't know, this may be one of the most hammered up and be a great play as soon as the election is over, or even uh, people may start dabbing into this a little bit before the election, uh, thinking that uh, at least the rhetoric uh, for this uh, sector is uh, coming to a close for a while. Um, a lot of these uh, financial companies uh, continuing to make previous highs on lighter volume. We talked about a few of them after Janet Yellen's announcement last week. And, of course, uh, the um, uh, jobs numbers on Friday uh, where most of these things were looking the same. But uh, a story of financial don't know a lot about this stock other than the fact that it's March 30th high, had 1.1 million shares at $16.12. Tried to get into it with less well. 430,000 shares on uh, June the 2nd. It's kind of going back off here. I just don't see a great deal out here that attracts me at these highs uh, to go jumping on the proverbial grenade for the rest of the folks out here in the market. Um, allergen, as we've talked about uh, the IBB and some of these other stocks, actually up today. They had some decent news, so the bucking the trend, but you know, even when we look back at April 6, this thing had 21 million shares at this price point. It gapped down on 36 million shares on April 5th. So you're coming back in there. You've got a double gap. That double gap comes in at about 255. If this thing does not have volume by then, uh, it, it, I think, has a lot of particular issues. You do have a low out here that's untested at 195.90. And I think there's a... Eh, especially if the, this political rhetoric does pick up. I think uh, these may be the uh, whipping boy uh, through the end of the election, so keep an eye out for it. Um, if you also want to look at the, another one, it's LABU. It's the uh, biotech bull shares out here. Um, you can take get kind of the exact same thing here. Let's see. There we go. Um, what happened here? 
Come on. Oh, we're going to the break anyway. Well, we'll look at this when we come back. Uh, give me a call, 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com. Post a message in the den. we got a few emails here to wrap up at the end of the show. I'll get to those and uh, questions in the den, too. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Uh, anyway, uh, LABU, which is the Directional Daily Biotech Bull 3X. Um, also, good, basically the same thing. A little bit of a pullback today. Um, energy's not as bad on the way up as some of the um, individual stocks in the biotech, but still a little bit less. And volume, though, still about half in this ETF. April 7th, 7.6 million shares, the 4.7 million shares on June 2nd. So you've got basically man, what it came with. And it went a buck above it's back under that high. You're kind of going sideways out here, but still a lot of political angst uh, going on. And uh, yeah, what else can you say? Uh, I have a feeling that, you know, much like today, the press is going to decide that it has to get involved in making news and not just reporting it. Uh, I think it's kind of a sad day that uh, the Associated Press had to get in front of the elections and tell everybody what was going on. They're supposed to report 
what happens. But uh, that's we've become an advocacy press and not someone who reports the news anymore. Uh, Excel Energy, X-E-L. I'm looking at this one, a little lighter volume. I wanted to see how this one reacted today. Uh, again, you know, we're higher. What can you say? It's going to be in the next couple of days. But I'm watching a lot of these stocks that are hanging out with a light volume at their highs and seeing how they act to see whether or not there's anything left in the tank for this market to go higher. But uh, 3.2 million shares on this one from April 4th to the 2.6 million shares on June 2nd. Last couple of days has been eh, light volume today, even lighter volume. Uh, and it is a little bit more down. But, uh, you know, these things are probably going to break. I'm more than willing uh, to sit on my hands and wait uh, and not try to anticipate too much of a position out here in these. But they tend continue to be problematic. Um, been looking at Yandex, which tends for a tech stock in Russia, tends to um, move with the price of crude a lot more uh, than any kind of tech stock should, especially for an online stock that has something to do with uh, being like a Google and, of course, uh, uh, maybe online finance and everything else. This stock has come right in to this uh, giant gap down. Uh, I'm kind of watching this, but certainly the volume isn't there. Um, we've got, uh, what is this? The uh, uh, 12 million shares that goes back to uh, December 16th of 2014. We're in that today with about 2.3 million shares. Um, if you even go back to April 23rd, that was 4.2 million shares. So this is kind of where uh, the rubber meets the road for Russian stocks. Uh, energy wasn't that bad, though, off this bad last uh, January 20th low. And maybe you can say that uh, just all the stocks in Russia uh, tend to have a lot more uh, in common with crude than even the U.S. stock market. Uh, but uh, just looking at how this thing trades up here, certainly does not have any kind of the volume. And uh, you should have a lot of folks uh, dying to get their cash back in this 22 to 24, maybe even $26 range for Yandex back up here. Uh, but uh, any big hammer out here in the cost of crude would make me think Yandex, which is trading uh, highly correlated to crude, even though it has nothing to do with it. Um, probably just a, a general uh, movement with the Russian economy. Yeah. What else can you say? In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Remember to tell a friend or two or three. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.